For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3.16. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. I'm gone. Thank you, Lord, for your word this morning, for your grace and your mercy upon us, Lord, for your love for us. And I just ask for grace in just releasing this word this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory. Glory. You know, this morning I just want to talk about the love of God, the love that He has for us, the love that accepts us right where we are. I could I could have picked any scripture I wanted on on love this morning, but I think that this just seals it up right here. The most famous scripture in the world, or one of the most famous scriptures in the world. Um, I don't think there's a person alive that hasn't heard this, and. I just want to just just say this morning that God loves you. That you might not that you might not feel that He does. That you might feel that you're abandoned. That you might be left. But Jesus says, "I'll never leave you or forsake you." I just want to lift up the name of Jesus this morning and say that He died because He loves you, because He saw you. The God who created all things has time within Him. He doesn't, he doesn't live inside of time. Time lives inside of him. And so he can be anywhere he wants in time. And he saw you personally. And uh, this morning, I got up out of bed. And I'd been doing a little praying and praising before I got out of bed. And I didn't feel particularly loved or anything like that. And then... The Holy Spirit began to lavish His love on me. Just began to tell, tell me how much He loved me and how pleased He was with me. And sometimes we need to just allow the Holy Spirit, just allow the Spirit of God to minister to us in His love for us. Because when we know we're loved, we're going to feel secure. And when we know we're, we're secure, then we're, we're going to open up. We're going to bloom like a flower. Um... I remember one time I gave a word at a church, and I think I've said this before, but uh, the pastor said, well, God's not pleased with everyone. I mean, he corrected my word, and uh, that's his church, that's his his, uh, his authority there. I'm not coming against that, but what I am saying is, is God can be pleased with us, and we might not think he's pleased with us. Um, God said to... Uh, Samuel, when he was replacing Saul, he said, you know, you look at the outward form of a man. I look at what's inside of a man. I look at his heart. I look at her heart. I look at my children's hearts. And, you know, God sees a lot of wounded and bruised and broken people, and he desires to heal us. He desires to bring life into us. His love for us is greater than we could possibly ever understand. Even even in our worst moments, He still loves us. His, his love is, and His faithfulness endure forever. He doesn't He doesn't look at us and say, "Well, they're not doing what I want. <laughs> I want nothing else to do with them." He stands there because I have a covenant with my people. I have a covenant with my child. My child belongs to me. And, and he holds his hands out like this. He says, come to me. Come to me. I'll heal you. I'll give you rest. I'll bring you peace. I'll strengthen you for the battle. And, and so a lot of times we, we hear about things that we're not doing or that we're doing. But the truth of the matter is, is for God to love the world. That he gave his only begotten son. His only son. The only begotten of the father. <laughs> you know. that it, It's our faith that saves us. But even in our unsaved condition. God was still there with his hand out. Come. Take my hand. He still loved us. And, and now that we're, we're born again. And we're part of the family. His love is. Is. It, is that much more real for us? Should we choose to dwell in that place, abide in that place of His love, and begin to recognize it? It's not what you or I can do. 
but it's what we will say yes to. It's what we will come into an agreement with, with what God wants to do. It's what choices do we make. Do we choose to abide in that? And when we choose not to abide in that, does that change His love for you? Or me, for that matter? No. His love is still the same. He still has His hand out. It's just come. Come, my child. He wants you to know that you are his personal pride and joy. That you belong to him. What parent, what good parent, well, there's some bad parents out there. Um, what parent who truly loves his child or reject his child when he makes a mistake? Who, who, what, what, what parent that loves his child or her child is gonna not hope for the best for their child, not hold their hand out and say, come on, I know you can do it, Lord. You know, when I look back on how I raised my kids up, I didn't have really good tools and skills to be a good dad. There's some people that are, are a way better dad than me. But, that being said, God's the best dad in the whole wide world. And he'll teach us how to be good parents. He'll teach us how to be good brothers and sisters. He'll teach us how to lift each other up. But he wants you to know right now, right in the second, no matter where you're at, he loves you. He loves you with an everlasting love that can't be broken. In Romans 8, it says, What can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus? Think about that. Uh, what what can shoehorn us away from God? What what can put it in cat's paw and pull up those boards? Nothing. Nothing. Not life, nor death, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things to come, or things in the past can keep you from God. And on that same token, I really feel like there's people carrying some weights and some burdens that they shouldn't be carrying. It. Even while you're carrying that, he's saying, my child, release that to me. Release that burden to me. Let me take that burden off. Let me surround you with my love. You're never, you're never out and away from my love. My love is always attempting to bring you back in. I am not disappointed in you. I love you with an everlasting love. My covenant with you is unbreakable. That's the Lord. And I just want to say thank you for coming and sitting with me this morning. You're awesome. You're awesome. And just allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you today. I believe that the Holy Spirit wants to minister to those who are watching this and those who aren't watching it. And if you're watching this, the Holy Spirit wants to minister to you today. He wants to He wants to bring some healing into you. Just say, I receive that healing. I receive that healing. And thank you for that healing. If you're having a struggle overcoming something in your life, just just give it to Him. Just say, I, I can't do this on my own. I need your help. He's going to give you supernatural strength to overcome those things. Whatever it is you need, God will answer that need and in an abundance. So I just want to say thank you, Lord, for your mercy and your grace upon this word this morning. I ask for God that you bless my brothers and sisters. That, it, that we would walk in your love and we would release that to others. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, hey, get along with the Lord. Begin to seek Him. Begin to thank Him. Begin to praise Him. Step out in faith and become worship. They worship God, must worship in the spirit and truth. Hey, I'll see you. Bye. <laughs>